Lewis, it's great to see Mercedes this year with a car that hopefully you can kind of attack and move forward. I know that you're maybe not too far up the grid of where you'd like to be, but are you excited about the prospects of what you can achieve from ninth today? Yeah, let me pull you up on something. You, you, you rated me pretty low on the, on, the, on the predictions. Oh, I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting you on the spot. <laughs> Should see his face. Um, yeah, no, yeah, it's really... Now, that is another blow for Mercedes. After having back-to-back -back setbacks, Mercedes is now ready for another shot. But the Suzuka hit will cost Mercedes a lot. That sounds intriguing, right? Well, let's see what was waiting for Mercedes under the hood this time. Toto Wolff and Mercedes have had a very tough season this time. They were criticized for everything under the grid. Now, the Suzuka Grand Prix is bringing something huge to carry for them. The first one comes with their position in the point table, which seems so low for a giant like Mercedes. The other one comes with its golden boy, Lewis Hamilton, and his messages that spark a fire in the team. Now, this will have some serious consequences for Mercedes that will determine their position in the 2024 season. Did Lewis Hamilton just draw his line? The Suzuka grid was an end for many things for Mercedes and the rise of some new decisions. The first blow to them in Japan was their players finishing in P7 and P9. It not only affected the confidence of the players, but also cut the last string of consideration in Hamilton. He's not satisfied with the tactics of the team. Despite being a supportive teammate to George Russell, this is too much to take from a driver like Lewis Hamilton. And now, what did it cost him? A player like Hamilton securing 9th position and 2 points is the least the paddock expects. One being the face of Mercedes, it is the least that could be expected from Hamilton. Now, that is not something fans expect from a 7-time champion. That, too, was when everybody was expecting Hamilton to come back to Suzuka after his setback in Bahrain followed by Melbourne. The Australian Grand Prix was a bad dream for Hamilton. Hamilton endured his worst start to an F1 season before going to Ferrari in 2025. After the three races this season, his scorecard echoed 8 points, which was quite surprising. In Melbourne, Russell was battling for 6th place against Fernando Alonso of Aston Martin until he crashed. Hamilton was fighting for the lower points paying positions when his engine failed and he came to a halt on lap 16. The paddock literally sighed along with him when Hamilton was knocked out in Q2. It is assumed that this was his worst qualifying score at the Australian Grand Prix since 2010. Now, Hamilton's only hope of proving his skills was the tricky Suzuka grid, even though the free practice sessions promised a low track temperature and predicted that it would not change drastically during the race event itself. Even though there were speculations that the Mercedes was in favor of Russell, Hamilton's impressive practice sessions gave immense hope for the paddock that the game would be in favor of Hamilton. Now, what went wrong? Well, despite all Hamilton's preparations and hard work, apparent damage from contact with Charles Leclerc of Ferrari, and subsequent understeering issues caused him to lose. This situation forced Hamilton to make a hard decision to let Russell overtake him, aiming to optimize the team's overall performance in the points table. Even after putting his heart out in practice, along with the advantageous cloud cover and cooler temperatures during the race, Hamilton failed in front of the paddock. Even though that team game somehow saved Mercedes from shame, Hamilton's bang performance was what cost him in return. Even though Hamilton paved the way for Russell as a team, his frustration was evident when the car's resulting vibrations remained unsettled, which further led to scrap points. As a result of his anger, he ordered Bono Mercedes to change the strategy since what they were proposing was of no use to the grid for the drivers and the car's performance. The hard tire was pretty bad. The median tire was much better, so I'm not sure. In hindsight, it might look we should have had two medium tires, but in general, the car was pretty bad today. This is what Hamilton has to say about the hard tire that was used for the ride. But what did the team do in return? Ah, uh, it's not easy for a player like Hamilton to let George Russell overtake him in a Grand Prix when it comes to his reputation in the field. But for the sake of the team as a whole, he put his reputation at stake. However, even after Hamilton hinted at the team's failure in the strategy, Mercedes was not ready to acknowledge it. W15 was Mercedes' new hope in Suzuki. 
After having setbacks with W14 in Melbourne, the engineering team made sure that W14 would undergo significant transformation as it became W15. Even after the W15 hit the road, the team's tactics to use hard compound tires just led to all the efforts going in vain. Moreover, it was a loss for Lewis Hamilton. So do you think he left it there? He clearly didn't. Hamilton asked questions and asked for a justification regarding the confusion on the grid, but Mercedes already had an answer set for him. With our tire allocation, we were able to give ourselves the possibility of looking at either one or two stops after the red flag hands the hard tire restart. Ultimately, as the race progressed, the tire degradation showed that the two-stop was going to be the quickest way to the flag. Our second and third stands showed a solid pace compared to those around us. We knew that Suzuka would not be our strongest track, though, and with time loss being overtaken in the offset strategy, we couldn't take it back to P6, which was likely the maximum today. The no-blame culture is nothing new for Mercedes and its head taught a wolf. When Mercedes held their head down in the Australian Grand Prix, the accused Otto Wolf had in his pocket was the data from the wind tunnel. He said that the team's tunnel findings did not match how the car behaved on track. Therefore, they are not able to test the upgrades in the wind tunnel and decide whether or not they will benefit the car. Now, the same no blame culture is hitting the spot again, but this time it was right over the head of Hamilton. After going through every nook and corner of W15, Hamilton was pretty confident with the car and how he handled it. In Melbourne, one of the most echoed criticisms was that the W14 was more aligned towards the needs and preferences of George Russell rather than Hamilton. This time, after taking note of Hamilton's needs and needs, engineers made a beast with which he was quite satisfied. But luck was all against him. But you might be surprised to hear what Todd of Wolf has to say about Mercedes' performance in Japan. The experiments have worked. We have a clear direction, even though the qualifying and racing results do not reflect at all. We aimed for a one stop and then we realized it wasn't possible, probably over managing the tires. From the moment we picked up the speed and similar sting lengths, we were competitive. We have a much better understanding of the car and a lot more data that points us in the right direction, even if it is reflected in the results. I can't go racing in Shanghai, we just need a better start of the weekend and see what we can do with a car. Even when Hamilton is hissing about the strategy and car's drawbacks, Todd of Wolf appears to pay no attention to that. He hopes that his fake optimism might take Mercedes to several heights. And now the waves of disagreement have started taking form in Russell as well. After facing back-to-back -back setbacks along the Mercedes and the F1, it seems that Russell is also finding something unlikely in the team. It is certain that Russell won't be successful in outrunning Aston Martin, etc., if this is how Mercedes is planning to deal with the 2024 season. Now, what drives Hamilton forward is the hope that his hard work might take Mercedes to several heights before he leaves for Ferrari. Of course, there is excitement for the future, but right now, we're going through a difficult phase. That is my challenge, and all my energy is going to try and figure out how we can get ourselves back on top. But that is not something Hamilton can do alone. Only a Hamilton Mercedes team can bring it back to a bang that is the need of the hour. If the team cannot provide what the driver wants at the end of the day, then how can they expect them to bring something in return from the grid? Comment your opinion, let's enjoy every bit of Formula 1 together, so be sure to check in by pressing the bell icon.